Hey guys, it's Amy from Colorado Mountain Living, and today I was going to tell you guys about our experience with foam insulation. So we chose foam insulation because of the efficiency and the R value that you can achieve with foam insulation. We ended up going with three inches in the walls and seven inches in the ceiling. The seven inch ceiling is giving us an R value of 49, R49, and then the walls give us an R21, I believe. Uh, so that's, we really wanted to go with that super airtight. We thought for this climate, it was going to be the most appropriate and realizing that it's very expensive compared to traditional fiberglass insulation. It was definitely one of those things we thought we would invest in and, um, just handle the cost. So anyway, this week we were able to, so this week we were able to go ahead and get our insulation guys scheduled. They only had a two day a wait period so and then they said that they could finish the come and finish the job in two days like it was super fast so I didn't really know what to expect I got to witness the whole production somewhat I mean I wasn't able to be like inside the entire time but I got to see some of it um, and there was a couple of little hiccups <laughs> you'll see what happened but uh, it's definitely fascinating and uh, definitely glad that it was something that we went with. But let me tell you a little bit more about the story, kind of show you what's happened this week with our foam installation install. So, the insulation guys came and set up this morning. They got the scaffolding in place, they taped off all of the beams, that they're going to be spraying around with the spray foam insulation to help protect them. So it looks like they're going to be doing this section first and getting that out of the way. They said they are going to be done by Thursday. It's a lot of work ahead of them, but I can't wait to see the difference between how we're heating now and how we're going to be heating after it's all insulated. Insulation guys show up bright and early the next day, ready to get started. And they've got, you know, loads of gallons of insulation material in the back of their truck. But I find out they require power to do their job. They didn't really tell me the day before. I think they kind of assumed we had power, but they actually have to plug in their machine directly into our breaker panel, which hasn't been turned on yet. So I am in a panic that morning because they drove an hour and a half to be here. So I am trying to get a hold of the power company to see if we can get power to the house as soon as possible. Hi, Julie. This is Amy Hager. We talked yesterday about doing a meter install, and I was talking about Friday as a good day for that. But I was wondering if possible we could do it today as soon as possible. Um, we have a crew here ready to do foam insulation, and they need to be connected to the power grid they need to be able to plug in uh, to the box with breakers in order to do their work. And so I was just wondering if that's possible. I think if you can get someone out here, um, this morning would be great, but um, would hopefully we can get something together. Thank you. Bye -bye. Not even kidding, the power company showed up 30 minutes later and I got to tell the insulation workers that they were gonna be able to do the job today. It was fantastic. Hey guys, there's our meter, all hooked up and running. Here we go, the moment we've all been waiting for. Ta-da! Hmm, nothing's different. <laughs> I was expecting lights. The guys got right down to it. They came down and installed their machine to the breaker panel and began working. <laughs> My dream day. Now because it's hot, they're going to burn the plastic. Oh, okay. And I have to cover because. Okay, yeah. I don't want any mess, you know. Okay, yeah, makes sense. Yeah. So, okay. You want to measure the plastic? Are you sure? Or you want to take them out? Um, you can. Maybe the roof plastic we can take down because we're going to do uh, wood up there. We'll do drywall down here. Oh, okay. I never. Oh. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Seven inches on the roof? Yeah. Okay. Wow. Hard to see it. Oh. 
wow. It's gonna be a big difference, huh? Yeah, much of it. Fun to look, and the fumes really weren't all that bad, but I didn't really feel like hanging out in there for a very long time without a mask on. <laughs> He's chiseling off the, He's scraping off the two by fours up there. Okay, here he comes up the hill. He was slipping a little bit with the tires. I don't know if it's too steep for him or if the, if the dirt's too loose. It's just if he, as a matter as if he can see what he's doing. He's probably thinking, eh, don't know if I can get all the way up that steep side of the hill. So he's making a go for it. Making it up a really steep section of the hill there. Using the bucket to kind of stabilize the machine so it kind of pushes them up. That's a good trick I could have used with the tractor, right guys? Well, it looks like the excavation was successful. Here we go. We got all the way to the well casing. So that's going to make it easy for them to get the rest of it, uh, rest of the line to the house. So. Huge pile of dirt, barely enough for like one truck to come through on the driveway, but looks like they got that all done and he was able to get the corner as well. So, whew, job done. You guys, the house looks totally different with this insulation inside. It almost looks like drywall. So uh, let's take a look, see how it turned out. And the insulation is like a cream color. And you can see how it goes over. This is like some of the electrical wiring they just sort of, sort of spray it in here. We got three inches on the walls thickness. I mean, you could see why you gotta get your electrical done because, oh my gosh, everything just disappears. The wiring just disappears with the foam. Oh, there's a, there's an electric line right there. <laughs> so, yep, we got three inches on the walls and then we've got seven inches in the ceiling roof area. So the ceiling roof area is supposed to give us an R value of an R49. So really supposed to keep the heat in. Look how different everything looks. It kind of re reminds me of a gingerbread house. So now that we're insulated, we'll be able to move the wood stove upstairs. Pretty cool. Hey, guys, I think we're ready for drywall. So the next thing that we're ready for is another inspection sign off. And I just noticed this, they had posted before they left an insulation certificate. And it kind of goes over the type of foam insulation. It was CCX closed cell spray foam insulation that was used and the R49 value in the attic area and the R21 in the wall area. So pretty cool. I'm glad these guys included it. And this uh, is going to help our inspector. I'm sure he's going to be looking for this sheet and we can call him. I mean, today's Friday, so let's see. He'll probably be able to come out Monday. I leave a message and he can come and sign off on this insulation spot right here. And then we just have a few more signatures to go. Of course, that's a lot of work between now and then, but I'm glad that we're making progress. And uh, it's funny, there's some residual spray off of the, the foam insulation kind of around the house, especially downstairs. And it comes off with a stiff brush or a little bit of scraping, but just a little bit of a, of a mess. So it was certainly messy earlier when after they'd finished the job and it was just foam everywhere. You know, it seemed like when they were spraying, if you've ever watched 
that show Stranger Things and it's like the sky is filled with like, uh, I don't know, like um, hard to breathe styrofoam. That is what it seemed like. I just didn't feel that safe being in here without a mask on. And even though the contractor didn't seem to care, he was all over just directing the, the work. They had uh, three guys. So the general contractor, he had one guy up on the ladders and doing all the spraying, just one guy doing all the spraying. And then the other guy was kind of doing the scraping, scraping down the, um, the two by fours or two by sixes in the walls to make sure you still have a, a way to put your drywall on flush. So that was kind of how they operated. And they had taped off all of the wood and all of the windows and I had just like gone to the gym and in that time they had already moved downstairs and taped off the door. So like the, you saw with me and Vigo waiting, sitting in the car, we ended up having to wait because uh, they, they were down, they were doing the job in the basement. So anyway, that's, uh, it was a quick job and very efficient and we definitely would recommend them. And I'll put a link to their company business if you happen to be in Colorado or I think considering spray foam insulation. Well, what an improvement, waking up to a temperature inside of 68 degrees instead of 52 or 54 degrees, huge improvement. So there you have it, our whole house completely encased in foam from the inside. And it's just so interesting when you look at the texture, it looks kind of spooky, like something out of a space movie. You know, everything, all these wires are co totally coated in foam and... I'm upstairs right now and you might be able to hear the echo. Uh, some of it's dampened, but I think the emptiness of the house is still contributing to the echo, but it's so much warmer. It's probably, I don't know, 60 degrees up here. And it's pretty much been 30 degrees up here before the foam insulation. So the little bit of heat that's coming up from the wood stove is definitely staying in the house, staying inside. So that's really awesome. And the fact that you know, we woke up in the morning and there was only like a two to three degree temperature drop from the wood stove going out compared to our normal 10 degree drop. Uh, it was a huge big deal to feel like the house is able to retain its temperature. I'd gone out to the gym this morning, came back, and it was the same temperature as when I left, And even though I didn't soak up the wood stove beforehand. So uh, it's one of those... I think I'm probably more excited about the foam insulation than I have been about every other step so far. I mean, seeing the house go up and being framed was probably the, the ultimate. But as far as getting our electricity turned on, I mean, we had that temporary line, so it's not like we were without electricity. And the same thing with getting our well done. It's like, we don't really have the plumbing in yet, so we don't, I, I'm not really experiencing the whole joy of, you know, all the hot water and all that stuff yet. So I think, just comfort wise and security wise, having the insulation done has been a huge big step. And I don't know, so far that's what I'm happiest with. We'll see how things turn out after the drywall, which we did get our quote and are going forward with somebody local in the area contractor to come out and do the drywall for us. Uh, I'm not sure when it's all getting started. We're still setting that up, but it's probably a one week job. So I think. Once that's done and all the walls are drywalled, it's going to feel like house, house. <laughs> and then we'll just have to fill it with uh, furniture or whatever. Now we still have a few more steps. We've got to do the floor and all the cabinets and all that kind of thing. So not sure how much we'll still be able to get done before the Christmas holiday, before the end of the year. We really wanted to kind of be in here by the end of the year. But as long as we get our house secure, I think, uh, you know, get all the major stuff done. Maybe we come back from... Uh, from the holiday and we're all like gung-ho, then we can move in. We'll see. I'm not even sure like when the cabinets will be ready for the kitchen. So there's still a lot more to come. <laughs> but I wanted to keep you guys updated on this insulation because it was so fascinating. And just the fact that they did it in two days, the complete whole house is done and it's solid. I mean, we're barely heating with like a wood stove and the whole place is staying 68 degrees. So I should probably get a thermometer up here just to kind of see what the actual temperature is. But I probably could take my coat off, so I'm thinking it's at least 60. Could be 65. But, um, I don't know, good stuff. And we're still waiting to heal from the well driller. I talked to them this morning. We've got our trench dug out, like you saw, and it's dangerous, you know. That's not like a thing that you want to leave out open. Um, so 
the, the son of the well driller is the pump installer. So they're doing everything, the electric and all of that. And they're supposed to be getting back to me this afternoon when to find out if he's available today. He had one to do this morning and we're hoping that we'll be the ones to get the afternoon job. So maybe by the end of the day, we'll have a water pump. Worst case scenario, I might have to wait till Monday. And I hope not because it is supposed to get colder and that dirt can all freeze and we just want to backfill it. So still one more little hurdle to go before we get running water is getting our pump installed and getting the boiler connected. And we'll have to call the plumber back for that. So still a little bit more to come, but we're guaranteed to keep you guys updated. Thank you for joining us on our journey. If you haven't subscribed yet and you kind of want to see the turnout of events, then just hit the subscribe button and the notification button will let you know the, the instant the next video comes out. So you'll be able to stay up to date with that. But um, anyway, we thank you for all of your helpful tips and information and advice that you've given us along the way. And it's definitely boosted my spirits. Obviously, I think you could probably tell I'm a lot more joyful now than I was a few weeks ago, just about the progress because um, it's all coming together kind of rapidly. So thanks guys. We'll see you next time. All right. Bye-bye.